Konnichiwa, this is the Shogunstein, and this is some initial thoughts and a look at how to play the new edition of Splendor, the Marvel edition. Now, Splendor is a classic game in modern board gaming, so let me just uh, summarize real quick here in the beginning that we love Splendor, and either edition of Splendor is a great game for your collection. So we're big fans of Splendor, and uh, we highly recommend either the uh, original game, which has the Renaissance theme, or this sort of uh, repackaging of it with some slight changes with the Marvel team. With that said, I want to go over some of the differences and some of the changes to it and uh, compare the two. So just in the interest of full disclosure, we were given a copy to review of Splenda Marvel by Amazon Vine. So we were given a review copy, whereas this original copy I bought at uh, Target, it was reduced to 20 bucks. So I got a... Uh, an original Renaissance theme, Splenda, here. And again, just to save time, if you're just looking for uh, the big question here, if you have this edition, do you need this edition? That's the big question. And to be honest, I like the game Splenda in general. So again, uh, you can't go wrong with either. But in my opinion, if you already have the original edition or maybe you have the expansion or I've seen people that have like a really cool play mat for the original edition that unless you really just love Marvel which a lot of people do then I think if you have the original Splenda already and you've already bought the uh, you know the expansion or you got that play mat then I don't think you need the uh, Marvel edition if you really like Marvel and you like Splenda then of course you're going to get this edition. If you don't have either edition, then to be honest with you, maybe again, if you're trying to get people into gaming that really like the, the superheroes, this might be a, a better way to get them into a modern board game. But personally, you know, if the price is, is better on the, the original one, um, I'd go with the, the original. I, there's nothing wrong with the, the original game. I'll go over some of the differences in, in the rules, but in my opinion, there's not enough of, of a difference to have to get the new edition unless, you again, you really like Marvel. So, again, if you had uh, either, you had to pick between one or the other, I would maybe just look for the best price. Or, again, I, I like the original. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So, um Again, you have there's an expansion for this, there's a player mat. So to be honest, I'd probably go with this one. But again, either way, you're getting a, a great game. So what are the, the differences between the Marvel Splenda and the original Splenda? And the big difference is just the, the theme. This has sort of a, a Renaissance gems theme, and this has Thermos and the uh, Infinite Stones. So one of the first differences you're going to see here is that uh, on the cards, you are uh, you got your superheroes. And the art on the cards is really good. The drawings of the superheroes are great. You'll notice, for those people who have played Splenda before, that uh, now you have the Infinity Stones versus the, the Gems. But the game plays the basically the same way with, with just a couple of slight rules change and that's the addition of this uh, Avengers token and this uh, end of game scoring uh, you know this is how you're going to end the game you're going to have 16 points you got to have one card of each color representing one of the infinite stones and one of these limited edition uh, green infinite stones so with this there's only going to be one token per player and you can only get one. So at the end of the game, you have to have 16 points, and you're going to see that the different, you know, cards, just like in regular Splenda, have different, you know, point values. And again, there are three levels of cards. You've got your ones, your twos, your trees, and of course the trees have a higher point value. And, uh, you know, the... The, obviously, the easier card to, to build, you know, with that engine, the less points it's worth. It might not even be worth any points at the end. So at the end of the game, what's different here is you have to have 16. 
you have to have one of each stone, including the green uh, infinite stone. And there's only you can only get one per player per game. And they're with the level three cards. So one of the big differences between this game and the regular Splenda is to end the game, you have to have one of the greens. You need it here. And they're more difficult to get. These level three cards, uh, when you're building an engine in Splenda, you're building an engine. These cards are usually more challenging to make. So one thing it can do, as opposed to the regular edition, is kind of uh, slow down a runaway leader. So if someone has a really good engine being built and they're running away with it, this can kind of slow it down a little bit and allow other people to, to catch up. Rest of the game is, is the same. So you, know, you can use the cards that you have uh, built to get these scoring bonuses here. Again, you know, did I get four of the reds? Did I get four purple cards? Or in this one, you know, three reds, three blues, three, uh, I think those are yellow. So again, I have colorblind issues. I believe those are yellow. Could be orange. I have to look. I have to ask a little Shogun Steve for that. But again, that's maybe one of the other issues I have with uh, this. I found the uh, icons for the uh, infinite stones a little more tricky for me to read than the regular gems on the uh, regular edition. So um, again, you do have a, a symbol and a color to make it a little easier. But even like I said with, with this here, uh, it's hard for me to tell if that's a yellow or a uh, orange. And I just found these icons maybe slightly a little more tricky to, to deal with. And the art on the cards is really good. There's really nice superhero art. Speaking of the cards, this is maybe my other criticism of the game. Component-wise, the card quality is not very good. They're very uh, thin cards and... You know, already with just very limited use, they're getting very bent. So you're definitely going to have to sleeve these. The other difference between regular Splenda and this is this Avengers uh, Assemble card, which is worth three points if you can hold on to it. And you're going to get it. You, again, you're going to notice that some of the cards that you can complete um, have an Avengers symbol. First person who completes cards and has three Avengers symbols is going to get this card which is worth three towards end scoring, which is awesome, except if someone then builds four Avenger signs, they're going to take this from you. And then maybe someone builds five. So this can go around. So this could really mess up what you're trying to do because you could have close to 16 with this and then someone, you know, builds enough cards where they have more than you and they take this from you. So that could, again, slow down the end game conditions. Very thematic for the Avengers to be able to have these cards with the Avenger uh, symbol to get this. So the reworking of this isn't just pasted on. I feel it definitely does have an Avengers theme between uh, this Avengers token and having infinite stones versus just the... The gems, but I was a little disappointed in the card quality. The uh, tokens, the chips, they're very good quality. I'd say they're uh, pretty close to, you know, Vegas level uh, casino chips. They did a nice job with the chips. I just, uh, card quality is a little lacking. So other than these two uh, rules, additions, again, this end game scoring and this Avenger uh, three points, the game is basically the same. On a turn, you can uh, take, uh, you know, your infinite stones. So you're either going to take uh, three of uh, three different colors, or if, depending on the, the player count, how many uh, tokens are here, there may be an opportunity for you to take two. And again, number of tokens, number of of chips you're going to have here is going to depend on the player count. So one thing, again, is you're going to take uh, tokens, just like in regular Splenda, either uh, two of the same if there's enough here, or three of three different colors. You can only have ten uh, chips. The other thing you can do is, with your engine building, you can complete one of these 
uh, cards. You got four blues, or you got you know two yellow, one blue, uh, two orange, and then you get this, and then now you have one less you know blue token that you got to use. So if I had this, you know, the next time for this card here, I only need one blue chip instead of two. So just like regular Splendor. Then, of course, you have the option of reserving a card. So you can reserve up to three like in regular Splendor. You can take three, put in reserve. And instead of those yellow gold coins, you're going to have these Avenger tokens, which are basically the wild. And again, they count towards your tent. So this would be just like those gold chips. You can also do a blind draw to reserve off the top of one of these piles. And then after, at the end of your turn, you can check to see if you have enough cards to fulfill one of these victory conditions. Not victory conditions, but one of these uh, extra scoring conditions here. And you can get one of these. Uh, you can't get two of these per, per turn. You can only get one. So again, it's just like the uh, kind of the important people that were on the top of, of regular Splendor. So basically, it's the same game, again, with just two little... Uh, additions than the the regular splendor so again the big question is it better you know again did they make enough changes to warrant uh needing the new one again if if marvel you know i know with little shogunstein superheroes is not a big deal you know i love the avengers movie as much as anyone i love homelander i love green lantern i love all those those superheroes but it's not important enough for me to go out and get it because it's a rethemed Marvel. So I think if you have regular Splendor and you've already made an investment in it, you don't need to upgrade. If you really like Marvel, then it's it's a no-brainer. If it's one or the other, again, personally, I'd probably stick with the regular one. But uh, if you're trying to get people that maybe don't game as much and maybe this theme is a little more appealing. Bottom line is the, the rules changes to me aren't enough to warrant having to have both. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with either version, but I like the original one better. There's, to me, there's not, nothing wrong with this game. Another nice thing about this game is the rules are very well explained, very easy to play. And this is with Splenda in general. This is a game that's so easy to play, easy to teach, but yet it's very competitive as soon as you start playing. This is something you can get right to the table, and even people who have never played it before can have a competitive game. And then, of course, people that are seasoned gamers uh, are still going to have a great game also. So there's a reason that everyone always talks about Splenda Killers, but uh, Splenda is still uh, is the last man or game or person standing because they uh, it's a great game. So very easy to teach, very easy to get to the table. Also, what I liked was that uh, when they made these new rules, they used gaming rules to edit it. You know, they do very gaming rooms. Paul does very good uh, rules explaining, so I'm glad. You know, rule books are very important, so I'm glad that they uh, invested in getting someone that's very good at uh, writing the rules. So the few changes that are in here are very easily explained. So if you're a, a Splenda veteran, you're going to read this real quick and you'll understand the changes. If you've never played Splendor before, you're new to modern board gaming, uh, the instructions overall very easy to follow also. So we love Splenda, whether it be Marvel or the, the regular. It's a great game, definitely something that you should have in your collection. Whether you get, uh, again, the original or the, the Marvel, it's, it's just a matter of, of preference. Again, I don't think you need both unless you're a super Marvel fan. I'd say at least get one or the other because this is a great game to have. It's always fun and, uh, again, uh, very competitive games. And as you're building that engine, it's always fun. Again, there's a reason that it's uh, still around after all these years. So I hope that helps. That's a look at Marvel Splenda. This is the Shogunstein Network.